Good morning, folks. This is Mr. Dan coming to you from the Landscape Design Classroom. And today I'm going to talk to you about the structure of plants. So a plant structure uh, determines its functions used to identify and classify the plant. And the main parts of angiosperms are roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits, and seeds. So roots, these are the anchor of the plant. They absorb water and nutrients from the soil, transport water and nutrients to the stem, and store food produced elsewhere in the plant. So there's actually three different types of root systems. You have well, three basic types. So you have shallow, deep, fibrous, and then fourth one, you actually have tap roots. So tap roots are how far they go down into the ground. Some plants may only go as far of a foot into the ground, uh, maybe even a few inches, and then some might go 30 or 40 feet deep into the ground. So a little more on roots. Tap roots, storage roots, fibrous roots. Um, tap roots would be like carrots and dandelions. Fibrous roots would be more like grasses and shrubs towards the uh, surface. And then parts of the root system, you have the main or primary root, rootlets or secondary roots, and root hairs. So stems, major above ground structure of plant support, uh, type and point for leaves, flowers, fruit, uh, water, and food distribution system. So any of the water coming into the plant is going to get sucked up by the roots or by the stem and may produce food, just like a bird. An example of that would be a cactus. So it may store food as well, and it's classified as simple, branched, climbing, or creeping. Moving on to leaves, uh, their main function is to make food and other chemicals needed for growth and reproduction. So leaves are gonna take in sunlight through photosynthesis. Uh, that in the combination with water coming into the plant is gonna help that plant produce food. So main leaf parts, blade and the petiole. So the blade is the broad, thin part of the leaf. Uh, the petiole is the narrow, cylindrical part, it may not be apparent. Um, you may, a lot of plants, you may just see the blade here, but you might not see this little guy, the petiole right here. So stipule, a uh, small leaf-like structure at the base of the leaf stalk, not present in all leaves. The main leaf parts, um, over here we have the seed head, the spikelet, uh, and we have a bunch more going down through here, which I'm going to let you review in your notes. So uh, the sheath is part of the leaf base surrounding the stem. And like I said, I'm going to let you guys go through your notes and go over each one of these. I'm just going to cut on like some of the more important ones. So being able to uh, identify these on a plant is only going to help you more with identification purposes. So you have different kinds of leaves, simple. It's a leaf with one blade. I get some examples of this are grasses, oak, apple. And you have compound leaves. I uh, have several leaflets going up the uh, stem here. So you have, uh, and it may be joined to the petiole or along the central axis of the leaf. So other ways to identify uh, shape, if it's needle-like, ovate, et cetera. Margin, smooth, serrated, et cetera. And then, the venation, the veins on it. So you may have some parallel ones that go straight up and down, pinnate that go from side to side, and palmate are a little bit everywhere, but they're spreading from that middle stem up through the leaf. So alternating and opposite, uh, the arrangement of leaves. So whenever I look at alternating, I think about uh, if you're playing a video game like Mario and you're jumping side to side, or when you're looking at opposite, it's kind of like climbing a ladder. So the flowers, uh, this is the reproductive part of the angiosperm plants. So many plants have complete flowers with both male and female structures. Uh, the male part of the flower produces pollen, and through the female part receives the pollen and eventually forms seed. So male flowers typically up on the top here with female flowers being on the bottom. Uh, some plants have separate flowers containing only male or female parts. So often these male or female flowers are both found on the same plant. 
many different terms are used to describe flowers. We have fing single flower cluster, grassmos or cymos, terminal or auxiliary, and then complete flowers, moving on complete flowers have four regular parts. So the calyx, corolla, stamen, and pistil. So when we take a look over here, the corolla is the petals, the calyx is the enclosed flower bud, right to the left of that flower. The stamen is the male parts up here, and then the pistil in the middle is female parts. Incomplete flowers, they're gonna lack one part. Okay, so perfect flowers have stamens and pistils, but might not have sepals or petals. Imperfect flowers lack stamens or pistils. So incomplete flowers, uh, naked flowers have no petals or sepals, as you can see here. And petalless flowers have no petals. So incomplete flowers lack one part still. Um, staminate flowers have a stamen but no pistils. Pistillate flowers have a pistil but no stamens. And moving into characteristic, anetious plants, uh, both staminate and pistillate flowers are on the same, so it has both male and female parts, such as you would see on oak and corn. Uh, dioecious plants, there's staminate flowers on one plant, pistillate flowers on a different plant male and female parts. So you'd see this on holly or Brazilian peppers. And polygamous plants are staminate, pistillate, and hermaphrodic, uh, bisexual flowers on the same plant. So you find that on the red maple. So different flower forms, uh, degree to which flower parts are united, placement of flower part, floral parts on the receptacle, subdivisions of each of the four regular parts, and symmetry of flower forms. So fruit, what is the fruit for? Uh, it encloses the seeds of the angiosperms, protects the seed, means of dispersal of the seed, ripened seed-bearing plant ovaries, varied form, color, size, texture, and number, and aids in identification. So two different kinds of fruit here. You have fleshy fruits, uh, such as the strawberry below. These are juicy and brightly colored and dispersed by animals. And then you have dry fruits, which are generally uh, grow in a brown or a different type of dull color. Um, and the food is largely confined to the seeds. So seeds can start all over again. They disperse the new plant, protect from injury and drying provide some food until the young plant can make it on its own and contain an outer wall and an inner embryo. So dust like orchid seeds to huge avocado seeds. Um, as you can see here, the seed for the avocado is a very large seed in the middle of that avocado. So if you cut it in half, that's why you always take out the seed before you eat it. Uh, varied in color, texture, longevity, dispersal, how much food they contain. Uh, a concentrated food supply is valuable as food for humans and animals. So that is the end of my presentation here. I know that one was a little bit fast today, uh, but I want you guys to concentrate more on the content uh, that we have up on Canvas right now. But if you have any questions at all, please uh, get in touch with me down here in the landscape design classroom. And have a great day, folks.